In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to use the Garmin GPS system to support marine conservation and marine science activities. So one of the first things we're going to do in this tutorial is to look at how we locate a place that we want to go to using Google Earth and how we generate the latitude and longitude of that place so that we can then import that into the Garmin GPS system. The first thing to do is to make sure that we're in the right coordinate system on Google Earth. So we want to go into Tools, Options, and then down here we want to make sure that Degrees and Decimal Minutes is selected. Apply, and then OK. And you also want to create a folder in your My Places section so that you can store your markers that you create in Google Earth. So I've created one here called Testing. It's very easy to create a folder. Click on My Places and go Add Folder and then give it a name and it will appear in your list on the left hand side. The next thing we're going to do is to extract GPS data from a Google Earth place mark. So let's zoom in to a place that uh, we might want to visit. In this case the reef off from Gullah Gullah, south of Port Moresby. And let's say, for example, we wanted to go to this particular spot here, right on the corner of that reef. We click a marker, and we can, when that yellow box, that target box is around that marker, we can move it around, and we can put it where we want. And you'll notice the latitude and longitude here are changing as I move that marker around. So we put the marker where we want it, give it a name, test marker, and hit OK to save it. It's put it down at the bottom of our list, so we want to put that in the folder that we're creating so that it keeps everything nice and neat, so we can cut that from there and go up to our testing folder and paste it into there. If we want to get information up again about that marker, we can do it two ways. We can right click and go properties. Or we can come up here into the toolbar on the left and then again right click and properties and we'll bring that up. Okay, so the next thing to do is to get the GPS data from our Google Earth marker into Basecamp. And I've got Basecamp running down here. Uh, it's ready to go and I've sort of zoomed in roughly to that same area. And so we go to the test marker, we check the properties, 947996. We're going to go into base camp, grab a GPS icon, we'll zoom in a bit because we know we're going to be about here. And drop it somewhere there and then click on the title of that waypoint and we can change the properties. So we're going to call it Sea Women of Melanesia and we're going to give it a unique symbol, maybe a dive flag and then we're going to change those digits. So 47996 and 29618 It's repositioned it on the screen and we're seeing it here now in our list and so to get that to the GPS unit it's very simple the GPS unit is currently plugged into the computer and so I'm seeing it here as a device and so we can go to the test list grab our waypoint that we've just made called SWOM and right click and send to and then we can browse down here, find the GPS unit. We want to send it to user data and click OK. And that's it. And you should see a little green tick box there in the user data. And then, of course, you, you can click on the user data and check. Now we're looking at what's in the GPS unit and it's showing everything that's in it down here. We can look in here and we should be able to find Swamp 
and there it is. So the GPS point is in the unit. So now we finally confirm that's actually the case. So we're going to unplug the unit from the computer and check it that it is actually on the GPS. And so to remove the unit, uh, like any other Windows drive, you're coming down here to safely remove hardware. And here's the mass storage device down here. You can click either one of those and it will stop the GPS unit. And so at that point, we can just physically disconnect the GPS unit from the computer by taking it out of the USB drive. Okay, so now we're going to turn on the unit. And it's going to boot up. And we'll give it a 20 or 30 seconds or so to read all the data. Okay, so the GPS has come online. We're looking at the map screen. And so we want to go to our page. Go to our main menu. And we're going to go down to the Waypoint Manager and enter. And now, there's a lot of waypoints in here, but then listed by proximity, but we can search for the one we want to check. And we know that it's called SWOM. So we hit the menu button and go spell search. And the first letter that we want is S. We hit enter and the second letter that we want is W. And we hit enter and there it is, the swan. So we can go down to done. There's swan. And those numbers should be the same. 0947 decimal 996 south and east 147 degrees 29 decimal 618. So that waypoint is now in the system. And if we want to navigate, we hit the go button. And now the system is navigating to that waypoint. So that's how we check that our waypoints are on the machine. Very important, final check. It's uh, you don't want to do it all on the computer and assume that the waypoint is there. Get out in your vessel, ready to do field operations and find that you don't in fact have the waypoint. So always check, check and double check. In this last part of the GPS tutorial, we're going to look at how to actually navigate to a waypoint. You've got your waypoint in the unit, you're at the beach, you're ready to go and start operations. One of the very first things you should do is to clear the track log. Every time you use the GPS, it's a very good idea to save a discrete track just for that day's activities. And then those tracks can be saved later and reviewed. So to do that, we go to page. main menu and down to the track manager and there you can see the different tracks that we've got saved in the unit and the current track is the one that we're currently using and that's the one that the unit is saving information to so we want to enter that one and we want to clear the current track enter and it says, do you really want to clear the track log? Yes. And that way, the track that we're, you, that, that we're creating now will be a discrete track. And at the end of the day, of course, you're going to go back into that current track and you're going to save it um, with the very first option there. And you can give it a name. So we'll go back to our map screen. So now we want to navigate. We know a waypoint that we want to go to. So we go to the find button and go down to waypoints. And it will bring up a list of waypoints according to proximity, how close they are to you. So you can scroll down through this list or you can search as we talked about before under menu, you have a search option. So we'll just, uh, for the sake of the exercise, say that we're going to go to this one here, Nelly Fish, and enter. 
and then it asks us do we want to go and we say yes and so now we're getting navigation information on the map screen we're getting an, uh, a pink line which is indicating which direction we need to go to that waypoint if we go to the page button and go to our compass page it is also going to give us information about how to get to that waypoint. It's telling us how far, and the big red arrow is telling us in which direction to go. And now it's indicating we need to travel east in order to get to that waypoint. When you get to that waypoint, you may want to put another waypoint in, and so the way to do that is to hit the Find button and tell it to stop navigating, or you can find another one. So find another waypoint and we can go down to that one for example and then we get a different go and we get a different arrow and if we're on our compass page we get a different direction. So at the end of the trip you want to get your GPS information off the unit and onto the computer so that you can review it, share it, look at it. So I've connected the GPS to the computer. I've opened Basecamp and as you can see, the unit is just being detected by the Windows system. Can take a little while, can take up to a few minutes. So you just need to wait until it's finished doing that and you'll see on Basecamp when it is ready to go. So it's finished checking and you can now click on our user data and there's our test site, test one, swarm one. So the easy way to get the information from the GPS into Basecamp is to just use this arrow here which says receive from device and if you click that it's asking you where do you want to receive it from. We want to receive it from the GPS unit and click OK and there we go it is bought everything off the GPS into this list here and it says data received on the 22nd of the 5th and so now everything in that list duplicates what is on the GPS. The other way that we want to do it of course probably even more valuable is to access the data from Google Earth and we can't import the data directly into Google Earth from the unit but we can copy and paste the information off the GPS uh, onto the hard drive and from there we can look at it in Google Earth. So the way we do that is we just go to a Windows file browser window and we go to our PC and so if we go into our Windows system we can see the drive there if we go into the Garmin folder and then the GPX folder, it lists all of the tracks and all of the waypoints that are on the system. If we sort by date modified, then we have the waypoints in there that we've created. So then it's just a simple case of grabbing those waypoints, or grabbing a waypoint or whatever you want to do. Hold down the control key, grab them, copy them and then paste them somewhere on the machine. So for the moment we're just going to put them in my Garmin. And so to visualize GPS data in Google Earth it's simply a case of going up here to File, going Open, making sure we have the type of file set to GPS, not Google Earth, so you need to set it to the GPS type and then you can import the data. So we'll grab this one for example, hit OK and there we go, there's a whole lot of waypoints from some of our work on the Great Barrier Reef and they're all going to be down here in our temporary places uh, under waypoints there will be a little folder and there's all the information and now if you click on them it's going to take you to an individual waypoint. And the same for tracks, so for example we'll open a track and 
So I'll take this one, a recent trip around Cape Cleveland, open, and the system brings in the track. Mm -hmm. And again, you can come down here in the temporary folders and then you can find the actual track. You can copy and paste it and move it to another folder if you need to. You can also look at its properties and see all the information about the track, how far you went, the altitude, etc. So these are very useful for looking at exactly where you've been on Google Earth, particularly if you're anchored in a particular spot. Um, and you can see details of the coral and the bombies and everything like that. And of course back everything up at the end of the day make sure you've got multiple copies of your information. That's it. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you've got any questions please email us coralseafoundation at gmail.com. Thank you.